Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to discuss about homoscedicity. Uh, this is one of the assumptions that we make uh, before creating our linear regression model. I'm going to tell you uh, about this concept in detail and then we will do the Python coding as well. So let's get started. Uh, so um, there is one assumption which is made uh, not which is named as homoscedicity, which we generally make about the uh, data set before creating the linear regression model. This is called homoscedicity. What does it mean? This means that the residuals have equal or almost equal variance across the regression line. That means, uh, let's say we created a model and we uh, predicted the values and then we found the residual. Residuals as in terms of error. Uh, error means predicted minus actual value. And then uh, we checked that we created a graph for that particular uh, error term with respect to the regression line. And if that particular graph do not make any particular shape, then uh, it doesn't, uh, I mean, it, it is homoscedicity. So it follows that assumption. So uh, let me start with it. Uh, I will give. I will start with an example. So here you can see that we have uh, taken x one, x two, x three. So these three are my um, these three are my independent variables x one, x two, and x three. I have taken uh, some random values for them, and this is y is my uh, target variable. This is my target variable. And uh, let's say with respect to these data points. These are y hat is the predicted, fine. So I'm assuming I have taken randomly these values. So this is my predicted value. Predicted value and uh, let's say this was y and this was y hat. So uh, in actual, uh, for these values, uh, actual target variable was 25, but we predicted as 20. So what will be our residuals? y hat minus y. So uh, um, I have taken uh, the absolute uh, of this. Uh, so uh, so all of the positive values are here. So 25 minus 20 and then take the absolute. So these are residuals. Uh, this is residual, this is residual, this is residual, and this is residual. Now, if we, uh, if we create a graph, let's say uh, this side will come as my predicted value. And this side will come as my residuals. So this is my residual. Now, if I uh, create a graph between this, let's say for this point, my value is y hat, which is my predicted value is 20. And let's say uh, this is this is somewhere, uh, let's say this is my 20 here and uh, for uh 20 let's say this is my five so uh this is let's say somewhere here so it is somewhere here so let me take one thing uh record this uh, uh let me write the numberings here so uh numberings are let's say intervals to make an uh, so let's say this is zero and uh, this side we have residuals and let's say Residuals are let's say one, two, three, four, and let's say five. These are my uh, residuals. So I am writing it R E S I D U A L. These are my residuals, and these are my predicted values. So and predicted values are let's say uh, uh, predicted values are let's say uh, around. Uh, this is my, let's say 20, uh, 40, and let's say 60, 80, whatever. So now if I create a uh, graph between these values, uh, when my uh, predicted values, let's say this is my 20, uh, predicted value is 20, then we have error of five. That means my error is here. And now let's say if my, uh, this predicted value is six, my error is one. So my predicted value is six somewhere here and it will be something here, right? And uh, 
the same way this is 1.5 1.5 will be somewhere here and then we have a value of uh, when my predicted value is 14 which is around here and the value is somewhat uh, when when my predicted value is 14 which will be here then my predicted value is here so uh, so what actually happens here guys uh, you can see a, it it will it will make some sort of funnel and uh, you can see that as the value of uh, as the value of this y predicted y hat is increasing let's say if i sort it in these terms let's say 6 and then 6.5 then my 14 and then 20 i just uh, rewrote the above column in the sorted manner and let us uh, write this one as in sorted manner 1 1.5 and uh, 1.5 4 and 5 then you you can see that uh, now focus on these these two these two columns uh, when the when the y predicted value like which is 6 6.5 14 20 these 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 values are increasing uh, the error value is also increasing so for 6 it was 1 for 6.5 it is 1.5 for 14 it is 4 for 20 it is 5 so that means uh, uh, my error are also increasing so what will happen in such scenario this will uh, because we have only four five data points that's why uh, we are able to like create this way if let's say there are thousands or millions of points then in such cases when the uh, when the predicted value is increasing uh, with, uh, sorry, when uh, your residual values are increasing with respect to the predicted value, then it will make some sort of funnel. When you, if we create a graph and it will make some sort of funnel, all the data points will be inside this. So you can see that if what will happen in that case when the, uh, let's say this is my predicted value, when predicted value is less, the errors are, error have less variance. And as the value of uh, predicted is increasing the error variance among the errors is also increasing you can see that so it will make some sort of funnel so this is called as heteroscedicity and homoscedicity is the opposite of it so in short we should when we create a uh, graph of uh, between these two things my predicted value and my residuals we should not make any uh, funnel shape or any particular pattern then it means that we uh, are following the assumption of homoscedicity or our data is following the assumption of homoscedicity. So in nutshell, we should, our data should have homoscedicity. It should not have uh, heteroscedicity. Whenever heteroscedicity will be there, it will make a funnel shape, uh, funnel shape when we will uh, create a graph between predicted values and residual values. Fine. Now, this is the explanation. Now, let us go to the Python implementation of it. Uh, I'm using the same uh, same data set which I used in my previous tutorial as well. So, uh, let us start with it. So, this is the just definition. And now, for graphical method, what I what I have done, I have I have done nothing uh, extra here. So, let's say from the uh, from our data set, I created X and Y. If you uh, have checked my previous video, then you would be able to delete it completely. Uh, so power output is my, uh, you know, target variable. So I have dropped uh, power output from data frame and uh, assigned the rest of thing to the X variable. And this is my Y variable. So Y is my target variable and X is my uh, independent variable. So after that, I did the train test split. After that, I created a linear regression model and, and did the training and then the prediction part. Guys, this uh, I'm doing these things in, in a very fast pace manner because I have done these things in my previous videos a number of times. If you want to check, uh, please go uh, into the playlist and check out the linear regression. So you would be able to uh, uh, you would be able to relate with it. So here uh, I am. What I am doing from SQLN library, I am just importing the linear uh, linear model, and from linear model, I am creating an object of linear regression. Then I am doing the training, 
and uh, after doing the training, I'm predicting it and my predicted values are into y pred well variable. Now, what is happening is here, we, we need to calculate. So our idea here is that we need to uh, grow a graph between uh, predicted values and the errors. And we should uh, observe what is the shape that is coming out of that graph. If, that, if the shape is some sort of funnel shape, uh, then definitely uh, that data set has heterostaticity. It is not following the assumption of homostaticity. So uh, for that, what, what I am doing, first I am calculating the residual values. Uh, so I have calculated the residual value. It's very simple, y train minus y prad value. After calculating the residual values, I'm just going to plot it on the, um, plot it on the, uh, this, my graph. Uh, plot it using the Seaborn library. I'm using Seaborn library and uh, imported it as an SNS. And there is one method scatter plot. And if you pass the uh, two variables among which you want to create the uh, graph. So I'm, I, I want a graph between y predicted and my residuals. So it will give me an object P and uh, here I'm labeling that on my X axis predicted values on my Y axis, my residual values. This is my limit, like how long my Y axis should be and how long my X axis should be. And then I'm doing the uh, line plot uh, for, uh, for this range zero to 1000. And on the title, I am mentioning it. So it's just a simple thing. Uh, I'm just plotting those things onto, onto the graph, residual versus predicted value. So you can see that, uh, you can see that the, on the X axis, my uh, these are my predicted values. When my predicted value is, let's say around 400, my, uh, there is no error. And when my, uh, when my uh, predicted value is around 450, then my error is, let's say, uh, error is around, let's say, 10 or minus 10 or so on. So the point here is that uh, it is nowhere making any funnel shape. Funnel shape would be something like this across the regression line. Fine. Uh, so that means it is following the assumption of homostaticity. There is one more method which is called as Goldfeld Quandest test. Uh, in this, uh, there are two hypotheses are given. One, one is null hypothesis. Null hypothesis states that error terms are homostaticity, uh, follows the homostaticity. Alternative hypothesis says that no error terms are heterostaticity. Fine. So in what we do in this, what we will do, we will take two sem, I mean two subgroups, uh, one set of high values and one set of low values, and we will check the variance of error. Uh, if the variance differ in these two uh, these two tests, then we can reject the null hypothesis. Uh, reject the null hypothesis, then we can say that these are not homostaticities. And if it is constant, then we can say that null, we can accept the null hypothesis test, which states that array terms are homostatic. So for this, uh, everything is already done. We are just importing the library. There is one method we will call it and uh, we, uh, we will get the value of P. There is one value. So uh, I, what I'm doing from stat models dot stats dot API library, I'm importing it and after importing, I created a list of F statistic and P values. And these are the variable names. So from this, we have this method, heat, heat gold fan one. So it's it's based on the name of the person and we are passing residuals and exchange values. So we will get the test I'm taking into. So you can see that we are interested into the P value. We can, uh, for the time being, we can ignore the F statistic. We do not need it for at least for the purpose of uh, checking homostaticity. For p-value, we can say that this is 0 0.472. So if my p-value is more than 0 0.05 in this gold Goldfeld Quandet test, then we cannot reject the null hypothesis. That means we have to accept the null hypothesis. And what is null hypothesis? It's saying null hypothesis says that error terms are homostaticity. So that means in our data set, this is the third assumption um, that we are looking. 
that error terms are uh, following the homoscedicity. That means they are not varying, their variance is constant. That is the whole idea. So in our case as well, we can say that the third assumption is also met and it follows the uh, it follows the assumption of homoscedicity. So guys, that's all for today's video. Uh, stay tuned for more such interesting video. Please uh, like, subscribe my channel if you like the content and share it with your friends. So uh, till then, bye bye and thanks for uh, thanks for watching this video.